Hey y'all, Nova here. Welcome to my complete beginner's guide for Manor Lords. Today we'll be going through the beginning of a city to the end of a city, and I'll give you tips and tricks along the way and explain all the mechanics that you need to know to be successful in Manor Lords. I will be breaking this guide up into chapters, so if I am covering a topic that you already know or you don't want to hear, feel free to skip ahead to the next chapter. I'll have them nicely laid out in YouTube, so it should be easy to skip around if you have specific questions as well. So when we're starting out in Manor Lords, your game will be on normal speed. I would suggest pausing it right away and just getting your bearings. Starting out, you have one hitching post, a thing of supplies, a thing of food and some other supplies, and your homeless people tents. Your homeless people tents will disappear once you've built actual shelters for your people, and we will deal with these things in a sec. The first thing you're going to want to do in a game of Manor Lords is actually zoom out and just take a look at your map and see where the different resources are located. So these are our berries. As you can see, it's eight out of 64, it's growing and it's seasonal. So it grows in the spring and you harvest it and then it doesn't grow during the winter time. Then we have our iron deposit and it says rich deposit under it, which just means that it has a lot more and eventually we'll get into it, but you can mine it forever. Then we have a wild animals and it is also a rich deposit. If it wasn't a rich deposit, it would only have a max of 20 wild animals instead of 40. We have our stone deposit all the way over here, and finally our clay deposit. These are the five resources in Manor Lords. Um, obviously you can make things out of them and you can gather some other stuff as well, but these are the actual deposits that you'll spawn in with on every single map. So the last thing that we have to worry about is our soil fertility. And the way we check that, and the reason this is important is because you need to know where to build and you don't want to build on very fertile land. So the way you check that is either by coming down to construction and pressing on it or just hitting C on the keyboard. And you can see this overlay over here. You can check where underground water is, which is important for putting down wells. And then we have emmer fertility, which is basically wheat. So obviously our fertility is not very good. Red is the worst, whereas green is better. We have flax fertility. We can't even really grow flax in this region. Then we have barley. Again, can't really grow it. It's just awful. And rye fertility. Rye is probably the hardiest. It's the easiest to grow. And even that only has a few select regions where we can grow it. So if we're going to want to grow rye, we do have to be very careful to not cover up these regions with buildings. And one thing to note up here is the development menu. And we won't go through this quite yet, but you do have to unlock rye cultivation. You don't start with it. So if we zoom all the way out, this actually shows the entire map and it automatically pauses the game. And we can see that these two regions are owned by the Baron and this region is owned by me, whereas all of these regions are completely unclaimed. Up here, we have the diplomacy tab and we can send messages if we want. So we can send that if we want. And then these are the outlaws, so bandits, and we could just send a quick message to them as well. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do when it comes to building your town is find a good place for your logging camp. So let's check the fertility real quick and we'll find that pretty much over here seems to be a great place to harvest logs forever. So we can build a road by coming down to here and pressing on this or hitting R either way. And we will actually lock it on to our hitching post. As you can see, roads snap to whatever. And then you can have it come over here into the forest. And if you hit on that, that actually makes the road. It doesn't actually, roads don't have to be built by anyone. They just automatically come. And then we can actually connect this road to our uh, homeless people tents as well. So in here in the woods is where we will build, build our logging camp. And I just hit C to open this. And this is the logging camp under gathering. And basically this will allow your villagers to gather trees. And the reason we want to do this first is you need logs to build pretty much most of the buildings. So you have your timber up here. We have planks, stone, and blocks. I don't even think blocks are, blocks are in early access, so I could be wrong. And we can unpause the game now. And you will see that your villagers will come over and use the ox to bring a log over to this to build it. As you see, you need two timbers to build it. And timbers can only be... Uh, dragged by oxes. Villagers aren't actually strong enough to drag them themselves. And so only log, one log can be dragged at a time, which means that the next thing we want to do is build a second hitching post because otherwise it will be very slow to build up our town. So we can just put it right next to our first hitching post. It doesn't really matter where we put it. And we will actually change the uh, construction priority on this to very high as we want that to be built first. And then we can change this to high as we do want this to be built as well. So as in any city builder game, when you want your guys to build faster, you can speed it up to four times speed and even 12 times speed. And as you will see, they will build up the logging camp and the hitching post very quickly. 
So they had to wait for the second log and then we will have the rest of them finish the logging camp. And then they will build this hitching post as well. So when it comes to actually putting people to work in your logging camp, obviously you just click on it and you assign families. You don't actually assign individual people. If you come up here, we can see the number of unassigned families. We have the number of assigned families. And then we have the number of living space we have. And then we have the total population. And as you can see, it says we have five families, five level one families. And that level is dependent on what house they are living in. So the next order of business, now that our hitching post is done, is to actually order another ox. As you can see, it will cost 20, but it is definitely worth it as it will allow us to drag two logs at once. And as you can see, it cost us 20 regional wealth out of 50, so we are down to 30 regional wealth. And the way you gain regional wealth is either through trade or by upgrading your houses as they will start generating regional wealth as well. So the next order of business is to take care of the supplies that we have sitting on the ground as if it rains, that supplies can actually get damaged and deleted. So we want to build a granary and a storehouse under logistics. So let's put down our granary and storehouse right here. I like putting them down side by side because it just keeps my storage right next to each other and it makes it easy to remember where they are. So I'm actually going to put a road just around them. And if you want to build roads like further, obviously you can click in the middle and have multiple points like that. And it'll just snap on nicely to that road right there. So now that our granary and our storehouse are finished, we're actually going to want to assign people to them so that the people will go and collect the supplies that we have on the ground. So the granary is used to hold food as that makes a lot of sense. And the storehouse holds logs and other tools and stuff like that. So the great, the storehouse will hold like firewood, charcoal, and the granary will hold all, all of our food. So if we put assign one family to each of these and we speed it up, we can actually watch them start to carry our stuff away. And as you can see, these guys are actually using hand carts. However, hand carts are way more efficient on roads. So make sure that you have roads connecting all of your buildings. So as you can see, quite quickly, in fact, they are moving all of our stuff to our storehouse and the granary. So notifications will show up at the top. And as you can see right now, we have five families who are homeless. So let's fix this problem next. So we're going to open the construction tab, go to residential and open the burgage plot as these are what families live in. And the burgage plots are interesting as you don't just put them down individually. You actually assign an area to build them and we can adjust stuff in a way. So I will show how this works. I'd say we probably want a plot about like this and it sort of locks onto roads weirdly. So this should be fine. And then you can actually rotate where the houses are aiming. So as you can see, that's not aimed at a road, so it doesn't work. And we can do it like this. And the issue is we don't have eight timber and each house costs two timber. So that's why this isn't working. So we need to pull that line back. And the way you get rid of the dots is just by uh, right clicking. And this should be three houses, I think. So these slots up here are extensions for your backyard and you can have chicken coops, vegetable gardens, orchards, and a number of other things that we'll get into later. And one last thing to note is if you do this and then not that specifically, but if you have it slightly extra in a different way, instead of having a backyard extension, you can actually have like a house extension, which lets two families live in the same house. Another way you can do that is actually reduce how many houses you have in the area and then all of them will have the uh, extension to the house and it, you have to have them extra long to have the backyard extension is how it seems to work. So anyways, let's put that how it originally was as we just want three houses with three extensions is that's all we have the timber for right now. So now that our houses are done, we've actually gathered enough timber to put down two more houses. So we will do that real quick. And you will learn about how big a plot needs to be for a specific number of houses and how long it needs to be to always have extension slots. It's sort of just a feeling that you'll get. And the other thing we can do now is as you can see, the supplies have been used up from the ground. So we can actually unassign our people in the granary in the storage house. We will reassign them later, but right now we want them open so that they can, can uh, build houses. Um, basically any families that aren't assigned work on construction. And I mean, that's pretty standard for a lot of city builder games. So because we've built five burgage plots now, our town actually upgraded to a small village and it gave us one development point. So we will save this development point for right now, but we can go through this later. Basically, each slot costs one development point and you get development points by upgrading your town. 
and the next settlement level shows you what you need to upgrade your town again. And as you can see, we need to upgrade our burgage plots to level two and we need two level two burgage plots. So the trees in the middle of our town are actually starting to make it hard to see our different buildings. And we can actually take care of that by going to the logging camp, going to the advanced tab and selecting a specific work area for them to chop down trees in. And if you hold the control key and then scroll up, you can make the area bigger. So let's get rid of all those trees right there. You can do this with any building that gathers from like basically trees, honestly. So our next goal is to actually grow the number of families that we have. And the way you grow the number of families that you have is by raising your approval rating. And the way you raise your approval rating is by meeting the demands of your villagers. So you can see all of the, their demands right here. We need some amenities, we need church access, and we need a market supply. So let's deal with the water access first. If we go to our underground water, we can see that a river flows straight through our town very nicely. And we can go to our residential tab, find the well, and just place it right there. And that's a great way to get water access for your buildings. And additionally, I'm actually going to move our hitching post plots just to make them look a little bit better. Basically, you can relocate, re relocate most buildings, I think, by hitting that button and moving it to wherever you want them. So we will relocate both of our hitching posts like right there. So now that our villagers have water access, we're not going to be able to build a church yet as it costs a bunch of materials. So let's work on our market supply. We need fuel, food, and clothing. However, the first thing for market is we actually need the market. So let's build a road going along the back of our rent residential area, and we will actually build the market off of this. Let's just make a nice square like this for a nice big market. And I think we'll actually expand that that way as well. So it's a little bit hard to see, but um, in the residential tab, you'll find the marketplace. And the marketplace works a lot like the burgage plots as it is a four point square that it makes. And all of those little things right there are how many market stall locations. As you can see, it says 69 market stall locations. And we'll put that down and this will be our marketplace. We don't have to do anything else here. It will automatically uh, have stall show up in it when we have vendors for our different materials. So this sets up our market, but we need the fuel, the food, and the clothing. So let's start off with fuel. Fuel is very easy to do. We go to the gathering tab. We need a wood cottage lodge as they will fell nearby trees to produce firewood. So we can put this right near our logging camp right there, and that should work just fine to provide fuel, fuel for us. Our wood cutters lodge has just finished being built, so we can assign one family to get fuel for us. And now we need food. Food is quite easy to do. We just need to gather these berries right here. You do that by going to gathering and go to the forager hut. And as you can see, these white things are the berry bushes. So we can just put the forager hut like right here, right next to them. That should be fine. And that's a little sideways, but buildings don't have to be perfect in this game. That's fine. And then as you can see, we actually need two different types of food. So the other type of food that we will get is actually the deer. And unfortunately, they are extremely far away. So. It's going to be a bit of a hike for our deer hunters, but that's just how it goes sometimes. So go back to the construction menu, get the hunting camp and set that right next to the deer as well. And then we will connect this road to right here probably. And then we can connect this road over here as well. And may as well connect that road through there just to make it eat or like right there. It's probably the easiest way to do that. So now that we have the berry hut or the forger hut and the deer hut down, this should take care of our food issues. So now that our forger hut is done and our hunting camp is done, I have assigned people or families to both of them. And as you can see, we only have one family left, so we need some more families. So I built two more houses right here so that we can actually have more families join us once our approval rating is high enough. And we are almost done. As you can see, we have the food stall supply done. We have the fuel stall supply done. You can actually see the supply stalls in the market and we have our peddlers in there. They will yell at you uh, if you're like in the third person view. Let's see if that works. We can go like that, get in third person and listen to them try to sell us their wares. You can see the berries, the bread, and you can't actually see in the meat. Oh, there's the meat right there, just being carried to the mall. Very, very cool that you can see them carry everything like that. So anyways, the next order of business is to get a clothing stall. And basically all we need for that is leather. And we have hide coming in from our uh, hunting. So we need a tannery to change that hide into leather. So we have industry, tannery is right here. And honestly, I think we'll just put this along the King's Road. I think this looks like a nice little place for it. 
So while our tannery is done, we actually only have one more family and we still need to build the church. So I'm not going to put anyone in the tannery yet. And to build the church, we need 20 planks. And the way you get planks is by going here and making a saw pit. So we will put the saw pit right next to the logs and have that be built real quick. We can actually watch it be built. I'm sure it will go quite quickly. So now that the saw pit is done, we will put our last person in there and wait for him to get 20 planks. So we have gotten our 20th plank, so we can actually choose a place to put our church now. And let's find a nice, good place. I think that actually over here at the end of everything seems like a nice place for our church to be. We can extend this road just a tiny bit, like right here. And then we can go to residential and put our church down right here. I think that looks good. Maybe facing that way. Hmm. Right there. And let's connect these roads just so that it's easier to get to the church as well. So now that our church is done, we have one last thing to make sure that we have all of our market supplies done, and that is putting the family in the tannery. And as you can see, actually our approval rating raised high enough before the church was done to have a new family join us. Actually, two new families join us. So we are at seven families now with seven living space, so it is time to make some more burgage plots as well as hopefully that will get us some clothes going as well. It'll open its own market stall right there. So let's expand our houses this way. We can continue this road like that. I think that looks good. And let's build some more houses. We can actually, at this point, build up quite a few houses. I think if we do this and we change it, it should be good. So we will let all those build. So our houses have finished up building. We have 13 houses. We had another family move in while they were building. And as you can see, a lot of trees have been felled over here where we have the, or the woodcutter's lodge and the logging camp. And we don't want them to all fall because they have to walk farther and farther away, making them produce slower and slower and slower. So that is what the forester's hut is for as he will start planting new trees. So let's place that down and we will build that as well. So as you can see, I have been expanding our village a bit. I have done nothing but build some more houses, so don't worry too much about it. But I did want to grow our families a bit before we went on to the next step. Um, so this is just a part of the middle game that takes a little bit. Just put some more buildings around your market and you'll be just fine. So the next stop that we need to get to is we need to build some regional wealth so that eventually we can build up our militia so that we can overthrow the bandit, which is like the overall, or the baron, which is the overall like goal of the game to overthrow this guy. So to build some regional wealth, the way we can do that is we need to set up a trading post, but the goods that we need to sell at the trading post, we want to build within our burgage plots. So I will show you how to do that. The next step is we need to start upgrading our burgage plots to level two. So first of all, level two burgage plots will generate one regional wealth per family per month. And additionally, it will unlock these specialty artisan workshops, which you can only build when you have a level two uh, burgage plot. And basically it'll convert the family within the burgage plot into artisans and they will stay within their house, not helping with construction or anything, but they will build these different things. So we have the bowyer, which can make war bows. We have the joiner, which can make wooden parts, uh, small and large shields. We have the cobbler, which makes shoes, tailor, which makes clothes, close gambesons, armor's workshop, which you have to actually unlock with the development point, but you can make a better armor with it. We have the bakery, the blacksmith, and the brewery. So the things that I usually like to sell is war bows and small shields as I will show you, but in the Trader's Workshop, they actually sell for quite a bit. But again, the first step is to upgrade our plots to level two. All it costs is four wood, though all of their amenities do have, well, amenities and market supply have to be fully decked out. So we can upgrade all of these, and I think we'll only get to upgrade the four because we don't have enough wood anymore. But if we go all the way, like over here, you can see like, um, or if we click on the marketplace and you look at like the food variety, some of the buildings won't have enough food so like these over here we can't actually upgrade them because well first of all i don't think they even have anyone living in them or they do actually but anyways they're not re their requirements aren't met because they're too far away from the marketplace and the marketplace doesn't have enough stalls for them so i forgot to mention at this point uh while we're waiting for our burgage plots to upgrade something you can do is add one person to the granary and one person to the storehouse is they will actually set up their own stalls as well people in the family will 
and that will be good as it will allow more of the baggage plots to be upgraded and they will also help with delivering goods and make production faster overall. And the other thing you can do is if you left your guy in the saw pit, you will have enough planks at this point that you can probably take him out of the saw pit just right now and allow him to help building. Eventually we'll put him back on there because when we build the Bowyer's Workshop, basically it'll use up all our planks, but for right now you can take him off and let him help build, upgrade the burgers plots. So our settlement level just increased to a medium village because we got the two level two burgage plots as I talked about earlier. And I put our development point into rye cultivation, so now we can cultivate rye. And that is important because that's the only thing that is actually fertile in our land. So I think now would be a good time to just do a quick overview of the development tree. We have four things. We have sort of mining down here and smithing. We have trade over here. This is farming. And then we have like gathering over here. So we have the uh, path that we went down with the orchardry and the rye cultivation. Sheep breeding allows us to breed sheep. Irrigation allows us to reduce the amount of damage caused by droughts. Heavy plow allows oxen at the farmhouse to enable faster plowing of fields. Fertilization allows, uh, basically fields are able to be fertilized faster. And uh, bakeries um, produce bread from the flour you make from wheat. Then we have foreign supplies, which honestly I've never used. I don't think it's worth it. Trade logistics lowers the cost of trade routes, which we'll go through later. And then better deals reduces uh, tariffs, effectively reducing all imports prices by 10. This is a very good, um, amazing deal, actually. Then uh, moving over to, well, it's a good deal if you have to import a bunch of things. Then we have armor making, which allows you to make armor. We have charcoal burning, which allows you to make charcoal. Honestly, I don't think that charcoal is very good, but having deep mining is very good. Beekeeping allows you to have bees so you can get honey as another food source, and you can also collect wax. We have forest management, which doubles the capacity of berry deposits. We have trapping, which gives a passive income of meat. We have advanced skinning, which doubles the amount of meat harvested by hunters, a very good upgrade as well. And then pelt extraction, which gives you hides from traps. I'd say that probably the best upgrade on this entire thing is the better deals, where it reduces all import prices. Um, but I went down this one just so I could show off farming in our unfertile land. Okay, so now that our burgage plots have upgraded to level two, they actually have new things or new requirements that they want. They want our church to be upgraded a level, so let's work on that first. So to upgrade our church, we need 20 stone and 10 clay roofing tiles. So we need to set up some new, some new industries. So unfortunately, our stone and clay are very far away. To mine the stone, we need a stone cutters camp, and that just goes right next to there. And then we can connect the stonecutters camp to this road. And then on the clay deposit, it actually goes on top of it like that. And then we can connect, uh, there we go. Can connect that to the road as well. So our guys will go over there and um, gather those or build those. And then we can assign people there together, but we need clay roofing tiles, not just clay. So. That means that we also need to go to industry and build the clay furnace. <clears throat> no, we don't actually have the stone for that, so we gotta uh, gather the stone. So I'll see you in a sec. So while we're waiting for the stone cutters camp and the clay camp to be built, let's enable trading. So to do this, basically you need a trading post connected to the King's Road. So we will have that built and we also need something to trade. So let's go back to our burgage plots and upgrade them into their special artisan things. So we're gonna want a bowyer's workshop. We're going to want a, and a cobbler's workshop for now. Eventually we will get a joiner's workshop as well. However, I think we need a couple more people before we can do that. Oh, and one quick note, when I say King's Road, if you zoom out, you can see the trade points and basically the roads that come from the trade points count as the King's Road. And basically that's what you need to put your trading posts on for them to work. So while I was waiting for our trading post to be built, our storage actually filled up, but you can upgrade the storage to way bigger. So basically it costs four timber and 10 planks and you upgrade it and it'll have 2,500 storage instead of just the 250. Okay, so now that our trading post is done, while it was building, we have been hard at work making war bows and the shoes from the cobbler shop and the Fletcher shop, they just do it automatically. Uh, if you do ever need to pause them, you can pause the building right there so they don't use up your raw materials. Sometimes I'll have issues where I run out of planks and can never get more of them. So, uh, and basically it's just because the Fletcher shop uses a ton of planks. So you can pause them if you're having that issue too. 
But anyways, in the trading post, I'm going to show you how to open a trade. So if we go to military, we want we want to export some war bows. So basically, you have to pay 25 to establish a trade route. And then we're going to choose whether to import, export, or full trade, where you do both. So what we want to do is we want to export war bows to make some money. And basically, we're going to say that we want a desired surplus of 10 war bows. So at any time, we will have 10 war bows to equip our own men with, but we will sell any surplus. So once, once we get enough money, we will also go into shoes and do that with them as well. But for right now, we will just wait. So now that we have trade set up, we are good. We should start getting a bunch of regional wealth. Let's go back to upgrading our church. So our stone cutter camp has been finished and our mining camp or pit has been finished. I set both of them to start gathering. And our next business is to actually, we should connect this road over to them just to make it easier for them to be gathered and brought over. But we need to make a clay uh, firing pit so that we can get the roofing tiles. So let's go to industry and I make the furnace right here next to our tannery and we'll make that real quick. So now that our clay furnace is done, let's put someone in there and they will start making us clay tiles. And that should be everything we need to upgrade our church. Yeah, we just need 10 of them and then we will be good to go. Oh, you know, I forgot to mention with trading, you actually have to put someone in the trading post for it to work. I completely forgot about that. Um, and eventually you will need more than one person. Uh, it just depends how much stuff you're trying to sell. So while we're waiting for these clay tiles, how about we set up farming as one of the things our level two Burgish Plots wants is a third type of food. So rye will give us that type of food. So if we go into our construction menu and go to farming, we can put down fields in the same way that we put down burgage plots as they will just be big squares. So now we have a choice. We could put down a small field right here. I don't think that's the worst place. However, we could also just do a big farmland down here. And I think that will actually work better than making that small thing right there. So let's have a road come out to like right there. Is that good? I'm not sure that's actually far enough. I think that's far enough. So then we will put down a farmhouse on the edge. Go back to rye fertility and it's annoying that it keeps switching that's definitely something that they should work on and we can put down a field generally people say that you want each field to be about one morgan in size as you can see it says field size right there so we can do that for our first field and we're going to want three fields and i'll explain why in a sec so let us do that. Those can be our three fields. Then in the fields, you're going to want to turn on crop rotation, have the first thing be rye on this one. And then on the second year, or on this one, we'll turn on rye for the second year. And basically, we'll rotate uh, harvesting on each field for each year, if that makes sense. I didn't say that the best, but anyways, rye first year, rye second year, and rye the third year. And now we need to wait for this farmhouse to be built. But once it is built, we can assign someone to it. And what else we need for this is basically this will make us grain and then with the grain we need to make flour from the windmill and then from the windmill we need a communal oven to turn the flour into bread. And basically that's your entire farming industry set up quite easily um, and basically you'll need to sign at least one person to or one family to each of these uh, but you don't need to sign the families to the windmill or the communal oven until they do their harvest and you can unassign them once they've made all the uh, wheat into bread so you can do like hot assigning if you want but I'm pretty sure that one family is generally good enough for a one Morgan they will finish everything as you can see down here we have plowing progress sowing progress crop progress and harvest progress so we have now reached the point where we have 10 clay roof tiles, so we can actually upgrade our church. However, we don't have enough logs because I just used them to build some more burgage plots. Now we have enough and we can hit upgrade on our church. And while that is upgrading, as you can see, we have got a bunch of regional wealth from trading. I did open another trade for the shoes as I said I would, so obviously we're exporting them down to five and we're getting eight per export, which is quite good, honestly. So with all this extra regional wealth, we can now actually add on extensions to our burgage plots. And I don't mean these extensions, I mean these extensions. They cost regional wealth and they give us extra things. Vegetables give us vegetables, obviously, but however, the family that lives there does have to plant them and it takes time out of their day. So I don't generally like doing the vegetable garden. The chicken coop just gives a passive yield of eggs, which I like a lot. The goat shed gives us a passive, passive yield of hide and the apple orchard gives us apples however it takes three years to grow so the apple orchard is sort of a late game sort of thing 
So right now, we're gonna build a bunch of chicken coops as it is an amazing way of providing an extra type of food in addition to the bread that we just set up with the farming. So we will change all of those into chicken as, as you see that's in our regional wealth uh, down quite a bit. And we can actually add a couple of uh, goats as well as I think we're running out of hide pretty consistently. So let's add on some goat sheds as well. We'll just add on three goat sheds like that. And so those will take a little bit to build as they will need workers to come over and build them, but they do build quite quickly under 12 times speed as you can see. And let's go check on our farming. So our farmhouse has finished so we can add someone to there. And it's August so they shouldn't really do anything this year, but at the start of next year they will uh, sow one of our fields and with rye and start that going. So while we're waiting for some stuff to build, I think now would be a good time to go into administration with our manor. So it does say locked with the small village, however we are bigger than a small village, so we actually can build it. I think normally we can put the manor near our church as that would make quite a bit of sense. Um, and we can, as we zoom out, the church is actually at the back of our town, so I would normally do that, but I think we actually want the manor where we think bandits might come from, so we might put the manor over here. So we'll put the manor at this crossroads, I think. And basically what the manor does is it provides an administration building which raises approval rating. So you can actually build it earlier than I did. And eventually we'll add on walls and gates and outer tower to shoot at them as basically it provides garrison space where garrison units and villagers can shoot projectiles at approaching enemies. As it hasn't happened yet, but bandits will eventually attack us. Um, there's a countdown at the bottom of the screen that I'll show. And the tax office is cosmetic only, but it does look pretty cool. So. Um, we will put this, rotate it by holding down left click, put it next to the manor, and once we get enough wood, we will add on some of these as well. So commit, and the manor is important also because um, it allows us to tax our citizens, which will lower how much regional wealth we get, but it'll raise our treasury, and with the treasury we can actually raise a militia or hire mercenaries. So hiring mercenaries, these are the different costs, and basically it gives you a free um, armies that you can use and these are nice because basically if you have free armies it doesn't use your own villagers to attack and then when they die it's not a big deal because you're not losing your villagers and you can also raise a militia however again these use your villagers but let's set up our militia just because we can so as you see we have 20 spears and 20 large shields which is what the spear militia requires so 20 of those and we also have the 20 war bows so we can set that up like that. So now we have two militias just in case we get attacked and we can rally them just by clicking on them, rally and then click right there, but we don't need to do that yet. And honestly, most of my fighting I would much rather do with mercenaries, which is why we're setting up the manor right now. So as you can see, our manor just finished and here is where we can change the taxes and we do want to do taxes immediately so that we can start gaining some treasury so that we can have our armies up or hire some mercenaries before the raiders come. As you can see, we only have 116. I'm not actually sure what they are. Maybe they're months or something. They're not months. I don't know. They count down. But anyways, we are taxing now and it does lower approval rating by a little bit. It's like minus 15, but it's not a big deal right now. We really need that treasury money. And so now in the game would probably be around a good time to start building some more hitching posts as we will need the extra animals. You can upgrade hitching posts right there with planks to stables, however, we have ran out of planks. So what I have tried to do is, my guess is we didn't have enough uh, oxen as they were all being used to build stuff. So I actually assigned an oxen permanently to the saw pit just to drag over the logs. And we're gonna see if that balances out our planks, but if it doesn't, then we will um, add another or add another logging camp and another saw pit just so that we can get enough planks to, to build stuff and feed our Fletchers and joiner shop. Okay, so as you can see, the raiders are close. It's only five turns or whatever till they come. So we need to raise an army. So we're not going to use our own people because we like our own people. We don't want them to be fighting in this battle. So what we will do is we're going to hire some mercenaries. And while we could hire these for 110, honestly, there's no point. We could hire both of these for cheaper and we'll have uh, double, or not double, but we'll have four groups of army instead of just three. So if you take a look, these have two attacks, six armor. I haven't actually really like understood what the different attack and armor stats really mean for the battles, but basically they're fine. Both of these will be good. Um, and these are all light mercenaries. So we will hire this company and we will hire the Wayward Sons. So I'm gonna show you how battles work and we will select all these. I'm gonna hold down shift 
And basically, we will put them all on control one. So you hold down control, put them one, so they're in the one control group, just like any normal RTS. And basically, they should spawn on the map now somewhere. Um, we'll just speed it up just a tiny bit. And if we zoom out, we have a group of mercenaries up here and a group of mercenaries up here. The bandits that are coming to attack will come towards us, so we're going to tell our mercenaries to move here. So we're just going to hit one and move them here. You can't actually see it because of the because of the snow, but I am telling them to come. So now we will watch them crumb across the map. Theoretically. Are they not moving? There we go. And these guys should be coming as well. And their fatigue will go down, but that is okay. Let's go see where the raiders are. As you can see, it reached zero. So we can actually send our guys to go intercept them. And we'll send our bows over here as well. And we can speed it up while we are traveling. I'll slow down when the battle is actually taking place. Let's actually send our guys to intercept them right here. We'll send these guys right here. And as you can see, there is a big aggro range and they're coming, but we don't want to take this fight without our bows. So we are moving everything here. And that is actually the Baron's army, but we don't have to deal with them right now. And it'll let us slow this down pretty soon. Okay. So let's check in on our town real quick just to make sure everything's good and we can leave it for uh, during this battle. I think it should be fine. Um, and let's take this battle. So they are in... It's just like Total War, honestly. They're in the thing. We can send our melee guys to go attack them. And then we'll have our archers move up from the side. <clears throat> and we can speed it up just a tiny bit. Let our guys attack them. And... Uh, that goes away soon okay so let's zoom in and as you can see our guys will charge them from behind and should get them and then our archers will able, be able to move up and shoot at them from behind and this should be a very easy defense and you can actually put your uh, archers to fire at will and it will make them fire more So we are absolutely going to destroy these guys. The battles do look very dope for sure. And they have been defeated. They will run away now. So our next order of business is we're not actually done here. With the mercenaries that we had hired, it'd be a uh, waste to disband them. So let's start looking for some bandit camps. Basically, they're these, and we can wipe them off the map and keep them from stealing our stuff. So first, let's go to this bandit camp. I don't think there's any point in fighting this guy's armies right now. He won't come and attack us, at least I'm pretty sure he won't. So let's move our guys over here, and we'll move our melee guys to actually go in here and attack. And these guys, archers, will move right there. <clears throat> Oh, actually, no. Yeah, you can't gather anything. So let's speed up while our guys move across the map. And our town should be good. We're still good on food and fuel. That's honestly the main thing you need to watch out for is food and fuel. Or food and fuel. We can actually lower the tax rate real quick as well. We don't need to be so high anymore. Let's just move our guys over. I don't know if he's actually going to attack us or not. Um... Sort of looks like he might, but we'll see. So we can take shots of them and move them in there. We may have to move. Oh, have to put it on slow. And our guys are still on fire at will. We can now back them up and let our melees. Unfortunately, they got the attack speed boost, so they might actually at least get some hits in. I don't think they'll kill any of our archers, though. We can tell them to continue to back up. We'll have our melee people go in and shoot. We can have our other archers shoot. What in the world? I've never actually seen them split like that. That's interesting. It should be fine, though. Uh, we should absolutely dominate these bandits. Yeah, we're getting destroyed. Okay, we send our guys in to... <clears throat> gather the bandit camp and basically what this will give us is it'll give us some extra money. I don't think those guys are going to attack. 
We can move these guys up as well. So basically we can choose to either send the resources to our town or it belongs to the treasury. The town basically gives us some regional wealth. This gives us treasury wealth. There's no reason to do it to the town because we have enough regional wealth, so we'll send it to the treasury. And this is a good way of getting wealth without taxing your people. And so we're going to wipe out all of the tents on the map real quick. So oh, there's actually one down right here. We can do that first. And I don't think there... Yeah, there's no one actually there. So I just... Oh, I don't actually care about that. We can just grab this tent. I think the other ruler actually wiped out those bandits. And don't forget that your town's still running, but it should be fine. I mean, it's, we have it set up quite well. So let's gather this, and we can actually send these guys over here. And we'll send it to our treasury again. And we'll send all of our guys over there. It's like a little bit weird sometimes. It feels glitchy. I don't know why. Sometimes it feels like if you individually uh, order them around, it works better. We'll speed it up. And they are all tired. If you move your armies so far away, they'll get fatigued. But honestly, it's not that big of a deal. Let's take a look in our town while they're moving over. It is raining. Not a big deal, though. I upgraded these to stables. And our next bet is actually we need to get a tavern supply going. So while we're waiting for our guys to move over, let's build ourselves a tavern. Why not put it next to the church? That totally makes sense, right? <clears throat> so our armies are still moving over. Our mining pit has ran out of clay, so we can actually take someone off of that because there's no reason. Basically, it's completely out. Same with the stone pit. And uh, we are moving over here. We'll grab that bandits camp. And I'm pretty sure that's the last one. I don't see any more tents on the map. So after this, we will disband our mercenaries. There we go. And... Uh, we got 120. So basically these paid themselves over like three times and we can just disband them now. So the next thing I want to do is I want to set up a blacksmith. So for a blacksmith, we will use it. It's an artisan shop and you need metal for that. So to make metal, we need to produce uh, ore. So let's put a mine on there and we can move it over, connect it with a road. And then the other thing you need is we need to go back to industry and basically the iron ore has to be turned into uh, iron slabs so we can put that with our in other industry buildings and that will have that set up right there. So our mining pit just finished. We can put one person in there, one person in the bloomery to make the iron things and our blacksmith is done. So they will start making either tools, sidearms, spears, or halberd pull arms. We'll start making sidearms to start out with. Actually, pull arms are probably better. And now I want to set up our tavern. So we're going to set up the brewery extension where we make ale from malt. However, we can't make malt because we can't make barley. So we will have to import the malt. And unfortunately, importing is really expensive. So we're not going to want to import too much of it before we upgrade um, our plots because basically we want to get another development point. So we need three level three burgage plots. And then we can get this where it reduces all import prices by 10. But anyways, right now, <clears throat> honestly, before that, I'd say we should probably just import the ale directly. So the ale is probably not in materials. It would be here. Or it's 18. Maybe, maybe we should just import the, bar, uh, the barley, actually. Let's see. Or the malt, I mean. Yeah, let's do the malt. And uh, we want to import malt. We want, like five of it that should be enough it's gonna make us go down in money a lot we can actually just stop taxing at all and we should actually add probably four people to this and let's see what else we can export our war bows are really high yeah, our small shields are really high so we definitely need the extra people and let's order a new horse for us as well I have heard that horses help with the trading post so I haven't seen it personally but I'll, I believe it so um, let's see, and we should start making more money from that, and we should start to see the malt as well coming in. Yep, we have our first ale, and that should... Now we need someone to go into the tavern to actually give out the ale. 
So we'll hire someone there, and then we need to be ready to actually upgrade our shops once they have the tavern supply. Because it is very expensive to import that barley. And honestly, I should have increased the number of people working in this earlier. I just didn't think of it. But. Let's see, what did we... Yeah, now we have the horse assigned. So while we're waiting for this ale to work... Oh, there we go. Okay. So these requirements... Now we have the food issue. Oh, come on. Really? What about you? Why are the requirements not met? Really? Oh, we were so close, man. All right, let's check the food. Tavern supply, come on, man. All right, let's build up our ale supply just a little bit before we do that. While we're waiting for the ale supply to build up, we can actually build a livestock trading post, and this is a lot more efficient than ordering this stuff like directly from the hitching post because basically it allows you to import a set number of livestock that you want. So we will have that being built as well. So the livestock trading post finished and I decided to import some more oxen up to 12 and I want another horse for our trading post. So that will be to two as well over time. And you do have to put one person in there to make those trades. And I'm building a bunch more plots right here because I'm av actually having a food variety issue where I only have eggs and berries and we're not getting enough meat from our uh, wild animals anymore. So I'm building these plots right here and basically I'm going to put a bunch of vegetable gardens in them. And hopefully, I'm hoping at least, that that will provide us with a third food supply. And basically, I made it so that all these plots have two families, so we have double the families to take care of the vegetable gardens. And I'm hoping that this will work. Um, I'm not 100% sure that it will, but I'm hoping that it will. So let's add in all these extra families into these places. <clears throat> and once those are upgraded, we will also add in, uh, upgrade them to level two baggage plots. And we should be building up on our ale soon. And once that's done and we have our vegetables cooking, um, I'll start turning the tavern back on and then we can hope to upgrade our burrage plots to level three. So now let's upgrade all of these to level two. This one's almost done. There we go. What about you? I don't have enough food supply or fuel. So we can actually add another person into the granary and add another person into the large storehouse. We had some crops damaged. Oh, that's not good. We might need like a fourth person or a fourth family to work in here. I don't know. Well, no, we harvest stuff in autumn, so this should be fine. We don't need that many people for this small of a land. So let's look. We have our grain. It should be turned into grain. Where will that be? Right there. Then we can put one person into the windmill and one person into the communal oven. And let's actually take this fight. Basically, sometimes the Baron will um, try to take over a new piece of land. And right now, it's... Oh, that switches over. He's trying to take over Nizolf, I'd assume. Yeah, this place. Oh my gosh, that's like... Okay. So the battlefield's right here. So basically, what we're going to do as we will pull in some mercenaries to fight for us and hopefully they will win this battle for us. So we have lots of money in our treasury. So we're gonna hire all of them. And we will have a huge army. So shift click on all of them again. We'll add them all to one. And move them to the battlefield. Let's see if they actually start moving. They should. Um, since we have been having issues, let's just individually move them to the battlefield. And that should work just fine for us. And hopefully, these guys start moving. All right, let's go back to our town just real quick and double check we're good on everything. I think we should be good while the battle works. We have 89 days on that battle. And um, we need to wait for those vegetable plots to start making vegetable veggies and stuff. So this is a perfect time to have this big battle. 
So let's wait. Ooh. It sucks that I can't zoom out while also watching our guys move, but... <clears throat> I'm not sure where those guys are going. Hopefully they're not coming over to our place, but I don't think they are. Okay, so as you can see, they're a little bit split right now, and I'm going to slow down the speed. Unfortunately, my armies aren't all together, uh, but neither are theirs, theirs, so basically what I think we're going to do is we're going to send at least... Actually, we'll send all of our infantry after that. Um, archer unit, it will run away, I'm pretty sure, but it'll give us time for our other two groups to gather together. And uh, now we can speed this back up at least a tiny bit. These guys should make it there, I think. So let's zoom in on this battle right here. Yeah, those archers are running away as I thought they would. That's fine. Let's just get all of our guys together, and then we can have the actual battle. Okay. We'll actually send all of our guys, but we'll send these guys over towards those archers. And then we'll have these shoot at them from behind. And we can move these guys up here. We'll just continue running these guys over. It'll take a little bit, but that's okay. So it looks like they're having a little fight. I apologize, it's sort of hard to see in the trees, but definitely having a big fight. That should be an easy win for our guys since we have three times of 36. Let's see if we can send one of our guys over to shoot at these archers. Sometimes it can be really hard to disengage, but we may be able to get them, maybe. Come on. It's really important that we get these guys to chase them. Uh, these guys still coming? Yeah, they are. Yeah, these guys are getting absolutely decimated by those archers. We need them to get over here. On the bright side, these will be dead soon either way, so even if these guys get absolutely decimated, it's okay. It looks like the retinue is coming back. So these guys here, move our archers back and send these guys towards the retinue. And our other guys are still coming. Oh no, nah, dude. Send these guys here, send these guys here. Okay, those should, guys should be dead soon. Archers should be able to get back. And these archers should be able to shoot at these guys from the side. Oh, oh no. That's not good. That should not happen like that. <laughs> okay, let's back these guys up. Send those guys over there. We want our 19 guys to go after these guys. And we want these guys to back up. We need our archers to back up. Oh, we got an attack from behind. Um, I don't think we're even going to dis... No, we need to disengage. Okay. This has been quite the mess, but that's okay. Yeah, so those guys will chase those guys forever. We will flank with these guys. We need these archers to come over here. We need these guys to attack these bandits over here. Our archers actually managed to get away. That's huge. Just continue running. And have these guys attack these guys. It's really important to just flank with your archers, as your archers do abs like they do so much damage. So we'll shoot at his retinue from here. This should work just fine. Let's move this archery archer unit over here behind his guys. Flanking with archers is really the important part. So shoot them here. Hmm. Let's move, just continue to move these guys. Send our guys there. We can send our archers back. Send those guys to attack them. Who are y'all attacking? Continue. We're doing fine at home. You can tell these guys to push forward and maybe go all the way back like that. I forgot about the retinue. Oops. Oh, 
We need to move our archers over here. Looks like our archers got caught, unfortunately. I, the engagement rules in this game are just like a little bit weird. I don't know. It feels like sometimes it's really easy to disengage and other times like your guys just refuse. I'm not quite sure what causes that. How are we doing over here? I think we should move these archers back here. Um, we gotta move them around though or they're gonna get stuck. Some of those guys in there. Some of those guys in there. Do that. And we can shoot at them from behind. Continues engaged. Let's move these archers back here. Shoot at those guys with these archers. We can speed it up a little bit. Okay. Shoot those guys. Those are broken as well. We can send these guys over to attack their retinue. Okay. Can move these guys back here. Attack. Speed up a little bit. And we should be able to win this battle. Just focus everyone on the retinue. And basically, he'll try to make us drop our claims, but we are not going to do that because he tried to claim it. So, we will keep our guys in the battle. That's weird. We definitely won that battle. So, <clears throat> I'm not sure if that's like a glitch or something. Because we definitely won the battle, so I don't know why it said that we lost it. I'll definitely have to report that, but that's fine. Um, something we can do is, how much influence do we have? We only have 1.2k. Are there any bandits on the map? Not that I see. So we can't actually go into claiming anything, but that's okay, because we just had that battle anyways, and I'll explain. The way that claiming works is you claim with influence, you have a battle like the one we just fought, and if you stay in it and beat them like we did, generally you'll get the claim and you'll be able to build an entirely new settlement um, on it. And the way you do that is you go to construction, you go to administration, you'll put down a settler's camp, and you basically get to restart. And I'm sorry I'm not going to get to show you all that in this video. We should have won that battle. I don't know why it says that we didn't, but that's okay. Uh, I guess we can send our guys over after him. But, uh, yeah, there's nothing we can do. So, um, <clears throat> I honestly might just disband our guys. And let's finish up on industry. I promise this video is almost over. Okay, so we are going to attempt to upgrade our Burgage Plus level 3. We're going to put one person in the tavern. Actually, two people in the tavern. And we are going to hope that one of our houses is fully fed right here and once our tavern firewood, supply kicks in <clears throat> we should be able to upgrade them so anytime now we have enough ale i'm just worried about the food we should have three types of food right now though so we should be able to upgrade there we go they're all full oh, we need more planks okay to get the planks we're just gonna pause our joiner shop and we're going to pause the Fletcher's shop as well. And also on the blacksmith, we'll change it to that. So we should have enough planks now, or they should start going up. And look at that. Start upgrading these. Need more planks for that one. We just need one more, and then our import taxes are so much cheaper. That is our third one. And this will upgrade our town once they're fully built. And that will be absolutely huge because then we will be able to import everything so cheaply. And we are almost done with all of the industries that you can build, actually. So we can actually get some sheep. That is another farming thing that we can do. We can have a sheep pasture and a sheep farm. So we will do that out there in a sec. But first things first, let's get the better deals. This is so huge because now our import prices and at our trading camp have all gone down to whoop. if we go to like look at our meat it only costs two to import it which is absolutely huge and if we go to our malt which should be right there it's only four so we can change that up to ten and we should be good to go from now on 
that is like an insane upgrade that you definitely have to get. So let's get on to the sheep pasture thing. So we will be build a pretty big sheep pasture like this. And then we'll build a sheep farm next to it. And put all the priority on that. Okay, and now we can import the sheep using our livestock trading post. So as you can see, we have sheep right here. Let's import and let's see. I don't actually know how many this field can hold. 53, so we can hold a lot of sheep for sure. Let's go to trade and let's, we can start with 30. That should probably be fine. Or honestly, 50 is not that bad. We have enough, uh, enough regional wealth to do it just fine. So we'll start importing them and they will be put into the sheep pasture. And then we can put all three people into the sheep farm. And the sheep farm actually has its own pasture space too. This pasture just gives us extra room. And then the dyer workshop breaks down berries into dye. And I will show why that's important in a sec. And then the weaver breaks down the wool into yarn. And if you have yarn and wool, then did I even leave one of these open? Oh, we can undo this. Oh no, mm, we'll still need the planks actually. Let's see, are there any residential plots that I didn't actually fill in? That's funny. Anyways, we can change this to the Taylor's Workshop. And uh, let's put that to the highest priority just so that it actually happens. Just a few more transported goods. And basically the Taylor's Workshop allows us to build clothes and we can make cloaks, which are one yarn and one dye, which will come from the sheep and the dye. And we can upgrade that to level three as well. Okay, so I have built up pretty much every single industry on this village in this beginner's guide that you can. The last thing I wanted to do is show you the retinue, which you get when you build the manor. And basically, you can customize your retinue. You can buy more men at arms by doing that. And then you can also upgrade their armor to plate mail. But basically, that's the only thing. It's a basically an elite fighting force that you can use for the defense of your village. But that is pretty much it. We have built everything. We have farms. We've built every single building on here except for the smithy, but the blacksmith takes care of that anyways. So honestly, there's not much more to uh, cover. I guess the one last thing would be this corpse pit. If you ever have people on your lands that die like bandits, you can build the corpse pit, put someone in there, and they will take the bodies and put them there. Otherwise, you'll lose approval rating. And additionally, if any of your own men die, make sure you put a person in the church and the church will do a good burial there for your men as well. But other than that, I'm pretty sure I've covered everything that this game has to offer. Please let me know if I forgot something in the comments and I'll do a follow-up guide. But I really do think that I pretty much covered everything you need to be successful in this game. In the future, I may do a guide on how to play on challenging difficulty. This was just the default difficulty, so not the easiest, but again, not the hardest. But anyways, if you made it this far, you're an absolute goat. I appreciated it so much. I spent like five or six hours making this video today, so... Um, it really means the world if you would like leave a like and leave a comment saying uh, whether you enjoyed it or not. But yeah, anyways, if you want to catch more guides like this in the future, feel free to subscribe. I really appreciate all the support that I've seen on my Manoids videos. And yeah, I hope you all have a wonderful day. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.